Focus. Hey, what's up guys? This is Marcos. Today I wanted to show you how I color grade in Final Cut Pro X. A lot of you have been asking me what is my process behind color grading, specifically using the tools that are built already into Final Cut Pro X. Personally, I like to use Color Finale because I just like the workflow, but with the built-in tools in Final Cut Pro X, you can actually pretty much do the same thing. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I've been holding off on doing this tutorial because color grading is very nuanced depending on the image you dealt with, the type of camera you shot, how you exposed it, the color white balance. There's different things you need to do to the footage. So it's very nuanced and even my process is constantly changing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just show you a particular example of something I'm color grading right now and show you how I would approach it and hopefully it'll help you for your projects. So without further ado, let's jump over to the computer. All right, so I wanted to show you how I color grade my video footage. In this case, you're looking at a wedding I was contracted to shoot and I shot it with PP off because that's what the, the client wanted. They didn't want any kind of fancy picture profile. And this is perfect because a lot of you that are just starting out with color grading, you should not use any fancy profile like, like S-Log2 or V-Log or anything like that. Try to first of all use the colors that come straight out of the camera and then you can start tweaking the colors when you get really good then that's when you should move on to like s log 2 or v log uh, and the other picture profiles that are offered with different cameras i also divided this tutorial into three different sections these are the steps that i take to color grade first step is exposure second is color correction and third is giving a style or a look to my video footage uh, you can click ahead by checking the description you can uh, click on the time code and just skip ahead if you want to do that. This is what came out of, out of straight out of my Sony A7S II. You can tell the image looks pretty nice, right? It's well exposed, and I would say that the the white temperature is pretty accurate. You know, this was done during golden hour. First of all, I start off by setting the exposure right, and what that means is I'm going to be shifting the shadows and the highlights to match up. Uh, or to be exactly where I want him to be, right? And for that, I use the waveform. So if you hit Command 7 on, on Final Cut Pro X, it opens up uh, the waveform typically, or you might have the vector scope. I use both of these. Uh, but first of all, I start off with the waveform to set the exposure. Now this is a, the, down here is a, the shadows, which are his suit because it's falling under the shadows and also the left hand side because there's not much light hitting this area over here. The highlights is uh, it's being represented by the sun, which you can tell is pretty bright. So that's uh, up here. And so, and the next step is to drop in the color wheels. I used to use a color board, but color wheels are more powerful. So try to use the color wheels if, if you've been using the color board. So if we open them up, you have the shadows, the master, the highlights, and the midtones. I like to start out with setting the shadows. So we're gonna look at our waveform. We're gonna make sure that those shadows fall just above zero. I just did a little bit of a tweak. I, I went down a little bit on the shadows, just a little bit, not too much. Now the highlights, they should be right around 100. Now it's above 100, so we're gonna bring them down just a little bit. There we go. Now they're sitting right around 100. And if we look at the difference, we kind of brought down the exposure because we brought down the highlights and the shadows. So what I can do now is bring them up again by bringing up the midtones. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, the next thing is to do a color correction. And for that, talking about specifically looking at the colors, making sure that they're right, that the white temperature is right and also that saturation. So right now I feel like this image needs a little bit, a little bit more saturation, just a little bit, not a lot. And I do that with the master. You can use this to saturate it or desaturate your image. I'm just gonna add a little bit of saturation and the white balance looks pretty accurate. If I wanted to warm it up, I take the, temp the temperature slider and I go to the right, or go to the left if I wanted to cool it down. But I feel like I did a pretty good job with the white balance. So I'm just gonna warm it just a little bit, not a lot. 
All right, so the image is looking pretty good, well saturated, well exposed, and now uh, we need to check specifically the skins, making sure that the skin falls along the skin tone line. And for that, we use the vector scope. Uh, I can't really tell where's the skin, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a mask. I'm gonna draw in a mask. Type in here, mask, draw mask. And I'm gonna, hold on, there we go. I'm gonna draw around her back because we can see her back. And you can see here from looking at the vector scope that the skin, now that we isolated it, it's falling to the left of the skin tone line. So we're gonna tweak those colors so we get the skin right along the skin tone line or even a little bit to the left, it's fine. Uh, and for that, we're gonna use the hue and saturation curve. So let's drop it into our clip and we're gonna leave on the mask. Let's open this up and to change the hue of the skin, I like to use this eyedropper and using the hue versus hue curve. So we take our eyedropper and just go over the skin, hold down the, the mouse and we selected our skin. And then I'm just gonna take this middle point and bring it up till the skin kind of falls along the skin tone line. So that looks about right, a little bit to the left, which is fine. Um, now let's go back and let me uncheck the mask and let's see what we did to the skin. You see that? We added a little bit more red to the skin to make it look more natural. Also, we affected the sun. Now, instead of looking yellow, now it looks a little bit more orange, which is fine to me. It actually looks a little bit better. Uh, if we wanted to, we can bring in more red, the hue into the skin. Uh, maybe not too much, just a little bit. Let's check the skin tone line. It looks pretty good. And also we can add saturation to the skin. There's this uh, down here on the hue and saturation curves, the orange versus saturation. We can select the eyedropper, select the skin, and it tells us our skin lies around here. We can add a little bit more saturation there. And, or we can reset it if we don't want to do that. But I mean, let's just add a little bit more saturation to the skin to make it pop. So that, that's looking much better, right? We, we expose our image, we correct it for any temperature issues or saturation and we fix for the skins the next step is to finally give it a style a different a distinct look something that we can <laughs> pretty much be proud of to look at right that's what we want and for that i know a lot of people like to use LUTs i use them too um, and you can use this uh, the custom LUT plugin and drop it into your clip and what I like to do is use different LUTs that I've tested out. Uh, there's some here by the Ascend and you can go in here and just uh, try out different ones and you know, like you can go really crazy. I think that's, I wouldn't like that. You can turn down the mix. There's one that I like here by Ascend called the 70s or 80s. Those are pretty cool. Let's go with 70s and let's turn up the mix. I never go 100% with the with the LUTs, they're meant to be turned down so to your taste. So I like to go around 40%, that looks pretty good. You see that? But I also wanna show you that you don't always have to use a LUT. You could also create looks yourself if you know how to use the color curves. There's another option here called the color curves and I'm gonna show you how I would recreate the look of that LUT. So we drop it into our clip and if we again if we revisit the 70s LUT let's let's see what we, what happened there basically it softened the shadows you can see there the shadows are less harsh and it brought reds into the the shadows that's all it, i think it, that's, that's all it's doing so let's see if we can recreate that with the color curves so again, it brought reds into the shadows. So we make a point here. This is the the reds, uh, the red tones. We're gonna push in reds into our shadows. And then we, we need to soften the shadows. So we do that with our Luma. Make a point here, point in the middle and bring up the, the shadows. So we're gonna bring in more detail into the shadows. You can also bring up the shadows just a little bit 
And uh, let's see how that looks. Let's compare the color curves versus the LUT. So this is the color curves. This is the LUT. Hmm. Uh, there's a little bit of a difference. I could spend a lot more time trying to get the, you know, replicate the exact look. But uh, I think I'm pretty like 90% there maybe. Right? Yeah. I kind of I kind of did. So just so you know that you don't always have to use a LUT. If you understand what the LUTs are doing, you could probably make your own and or recreate them using the color curves. I like to do that sometimes. Like uh, let's say I use the sand the 80s. Um, let me check this. I'll check this one. The 80s is pretty cool. It added a little bit, it added, it added a little bit of a color fade to the shadows, but not too much. Um yeah, and still, it's still quite punchy. I, I like the 80s. And I could also recreate that if I wanted to, if I know how to use the color curves. And let's do the before and after. Boom, you see that? It looks much better. And I always like to finish off by, again, checking the skin, making sure that I follow along the skin tone line. And it does. You can see that right there. Lastly, I just want to copy over these effects to this other video clip. They're basically the same. Uh, scene is just uh, different video clips so i hit command c and then i select this other clip and hit command shift v and i'm copying over all these effects and i'm just going to compare making sure that they look pretty accurate and this one uh, i need to bring up the midtones the, the shadows are kind of uh, too crushed for my taste so i can open up again the color wheels and maybe just bring up the midtones just a little bit more to bring out details. You can see that now I can see more of uh, their backs. It's it's more detailed. So that if you're color grading, you should take advantage or of these new features in Final Cut Pro X, especially the the uh, the color curves because it allows you to apply fades. Now I know this is overdone, and I actually push reds. I don't want to do that for this one. But the what's nice about, let me see, let me go back here. What I like about the applying a little bit of a fade to our, my images is that it makes it look more like a film because when, when you're using expensive film cameras, there's more dynamic range in the image. There's a, a softer roll off between the shadows and the highlights. When you're using consumer cameras, there's a harsher roll off. It basically goes from really dark to very light. That's because these cameras don't have a huge dynamic range. They're either exposing for the highlights or the shadows. There's really not much in between. Uh, but when you apply a color, uh, even if you're using a cheap camera, you apply a color fade, you're bringing in details into your shadows and you're kind of replicating the dynamic range. That's why I like to add a little bit of a of that, uh, you know, a uh, color fade. Uh, here, let's look at the difference. This is what came out straight out of the camera. And once you apply this, you you bring in a little bit more details. It looks more like a film, you know? that That's what's nice about that. So, you know, don't overdo it uh, because it might go out of fashion, but if a little bit goes a long ways. All right, guys, hopefully this helps you out with your color grading. I know that I can't possibly answer every single question in this one tutorial but if you have any questions anything that i missed or you're wondering about something please drop your questions down below because if you have a question i'm pretty sure there's other people that have the same question i uh, also want to mention a a full class uh, online course that i take uh, taken from uh, color grading central this class has helped me out in my process to learn color grading because it's very difficult i often have to revisit this class just to refresh myself on how to color grade and how to give my my video a certain style that i'm trying to go for so I'll link to that in the description uh, if you found this useful give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already done so and as always thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you on the next one